Anyway, on to the weirdest one. Oh, oh my god. What the fuck? <laughs> G'day guys, welcome back to a, another episode, my favorite day of the week, blind tasting. Uh, of course, we've got six different wines here. We're gonna try to guess what they are, tell you how much we spend on them, how many bottles we'd buy. And usually we would have Noah with us, however, he's still off sick with COVID. We do all film these in one day, so he's kind of off sick for it. So we have a amazing sommelier standing in for Noah. We've got Dan McAvoy, an amazing som from 2KW, who for the long-time viewers of the show, you might remember from 2020 when he first came on the show, the vicar of Viognier himself. Hello guys, I am Dan McAvoy. I am the head sommelier at 2KW Bar and Restaurant in the CBD of Adelaide. I have been brought along here by Brendan Carter of Unico Zello to taste some wines with you today. Um, I know Brendan because he has been peddling wines and been nagging to get wines on lists that I look after for about five years now. Top bloke, top wines, don't get me wrong. We gotta get into tasting wines. Let's run and do it. Go. Cool. Six more wines, six more terrible opinions coming straight at you guys. Uh, let's hop straight into it. Number one is orange by the looks of things. First thing that I look for for really well-made orange wine is this sort of funky lanolin aroma. Probably heard me talk about it before. Orange peel, jasmine, bergamot as well. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Orangey, skinsy style of wine, so showing a little bit of tannin structure there. It's got like the flavor of sandpaper, but not the texture. Not, uh, it's, just, it, it's a bit grating. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit fierce. It's a bit, fierce is such an odd way of describing that as well. Uh, this is, this is quintet, like, this is open up the Encyclopedia Britannica, bang. This wine sits there under orange, amber, skin contact wine, whatever. I'd hope to be spending around about $35 a bottle for this. I'd buy 12. Um, I would pay 50 bucks a bottle for this. Um, and I would probably buy six of these, just to two for now, four for maybe a couple of years time, see how it develops as well. Wine number two, we have a dense red little number. Let's see how we're looking. Ooh, okay. This is a little bit different from the last couple of weeks. This is a little bit bretty. It's looking quite rich, isn't it? Well, it's it's it's, it's looking rich, but it's still still kind of showing a little bit of not huge, not like Shiraz type con concentration. So that's really beautiful. Kind of like if you took every single different flavor of lolly. You, you know, at Subway when you're a kid and you'd make jet fuel, or we used to call it jet fuel, where you'd put every single different type of soft drink in your drink and then have it, and then it was like, what does that taste like? And it's like sugar. <laughs> this smells like sugar. Still think it's gamay. Uh, high acid, good structure, really firm, quite broad, quite complex. I think it's cool. High, and I actually think it's a cool one. It's not neb. I don't think it's neb, but it's it's it's, it's towards that Pinot Noir spectrum. But it could be like a, a Gervais Chambertin or something like that. Judging by the color, judging by the the richness that I can see on the palate. Probably three bottles for this one. Slightly more interesting than the first. The smell alone, like honestly, love the nose on it. it. Smells like something that I would pay an aromatherapist to have in the room while I'm getting a massage. Like it is lovely, relaxing. I think it's. I actually think it's really appealing. I think it's really cool. Uh, I, I, if you're into old sort of rustic French reds, do it, man. How cool. Wine number three, lovely white wine here. I hate to say it, but it could be Chardonnay. Oh, dude. Yeah, oaky Chardonnay. How, how else could you possibly respond? Gonna be easily dropping 45 bucks a bottle. Mmm, ooh, zesty. Lime juice, um, little bit, almost like grapefruit pith there as well. Yeah, still sticking with Chardonnay. Nicer than some of the others I've had. It's probably a six bottle bottle of white for me. Butter, must be Chardonnay. I would have appreciated maybe a little bit more acid, something a little bit livelier. I think if you chill this down and served it a little bit colder than it is now, which is a little bit lower than ambient, it would be a little bit more appealing. But then again, like real beautiful stone fruit um, characters there as well, sort of peach, apricot, quite textural, not incredibly textural. Leaning more in, we had a Chardonnay a couple of weeks ago that just didn't quite do it for me. This is doing it for me a little bit more. It's still not my creme de la creme, like the one that I'm like, this is what they're talking about. It's kind of what I'm talking about, but not quite. Six bottles, 30 bucks. Don't think it's going to cost you an arm and a leg, thankfully, but I have been wrong before. One number four, red, with just a hint of purple as well in that. Just an absolute hint of it, like the sleepiest of wiggles. Aspect to this, which is odd, because you don't really see that with red wines, but it's definitely seen a little bit more oxygen than is seen as typical, I think, for a, for any kind of wine. Lots of violets, blackberry, a little bit of cassis. Just really seamless though as well. I think it's, 
it's integrating quite nicely on the nose leading flavor essentially it's all just culminating into one I, this, it smells like the apprehension that i had when i got a report card that i wasn't confident that my parents were going to be happy with in the school bag on the way home which is a very odd smell to attach to a wine but it's the smell of youthful fear <laughs> because i'm not sure i'm gonna like it I think this wine's probably Italian. For some reason, I think it's like a Montepulciano or something Southern Italian, only because of the heat, the alcohol. I don't think I'd usually see this in France, Spain, maybe in Australia, but I really do think this is rare because this has seen a decent amount of élevage. Ends a bit short for my liking. I just think it, it's got, it's got all the foreplay, and then it just, it just fails the final hurdle. I don't think I'd buy that. Just but personally, I think it would suit a lot of people's palates. So I was just, I was just searching for a little bit more there. Here we go. Skinzy, beautiful nectar of a wine. I hope it uh, lives up to all my expectations. Beg your pardon? <laughs> <coughs> what? What the fuck is that? Uh, okay, cool. Um, it's definitely a fortified wine. I think it's been fortified with aromatics and herbs because I don't think this is 100% grapes and spirit. Maricella, yeah, Maricella, Maricino, Mar Maricella, cherries. You know what I'm talking about at home. It smells like that. The rose petals that I'm getting from here and the and the citrusy, um, the citrus zest I'm getting on the palate is actually not a bad little wine. It's just that VA just took a hook on my nose straight away. I think it's a musket. Um, <sighs> so sweet. Just like the Maricella cherries. Yeah, it's a fortified. How much is that gonna be? It's gonna be 45 bucks a bottle. And I want one bottle because it's gonna last me three years sitting on my shelf and I'm having shots of that after dinner with my friends when we pretend to be fancy. Like, oh, I'll have some port with our cards, won't we? Oh. Yeah, cool. I, I've got no idea what that is. If it's not a fortified, if that's just like a normal bang average wine that people are ordering with dinner, like that's chaos. Cool, yeah, dessert wine, great. Wine number six. I'm seeing through rosé coloured glasses at this point in time. Or, you know, I could be a rosé between two thorns, either way. Terrible puns, but we're going to go from there. Is it going to be a rosé? Oh, this is going to be bizarre after that last one. Uh, it's like, yeah, like agricultural and earthy and yeah, not like butterscotch snaps, the last one that we just had. This just smells exactly like it looks like. Great fucking rosé. Smells awesome. Lean, clean, fresh, bright, tight, little bit, little bit green, perfect amount of sort of underwriteness for the style. Mate, and that is fresh. F freshly bottled. There is actually still the smell of sulfur from pre-bottling um, additions. I think this is cracking example. It's like a real orange zest sort of nose note on the um, on the front of the palette, and then it goes nowhere. Um, in my personal opinion, I love rosé. I'm going to put it on record. I love rosé. Love Provence, and there are some absolutely beautiful ones made in our backyard as well. This one, I don't think hits the mark as much as I thought it would at the beginning. I'm gonna pay $28 a bottle for it and I'm gonna want 12 bottles because I'm gonna drink that all summer, even though summer is six months away. Let's see what the other guys think. We're good to go, guys, welcome back. Now that was a lineup, wasn't it? That was, that was, that pretty, was interesting, it to was say the least. All over the shop. In fact, I, I was hoping for, you know, obviously with, with your esteemed background would have a lineup of like banging burgundies and Barolos to show you. Oh, but you know, you can't, you can't, you can't always get what you want, you know? Sometimes you get what you need. Exactly. This, this though, I, th I felt that we probably needed someone of your talents to be able to navigate us through what the fuck is going Ooh, on here. I don't know about is, that. It is everywhere. Absolutely. Well, let's start off with wine number one. Orange wine, cracking little wine. Love Thought that. Thought it was fantastic. Yeah, beautiful. Like that mandarin orange sort of peel and zest and just, like I, I think I said bergamot in wine. Like it's got like an Earl Grey tea sort of note on there as well. Oh, I always forget to think about Earl Grey tea when I'm drinking wine because honestly, it comes up so much in the tasting notes and I'm like, oh, oh that's, that's a really good yeah. point. Yeah, almost like a gateway skin contact wine. I can see that, yeah. Yeah, before you get really into the weird stuff, this is like a really beautiful Come home wine. and you find well, balance you, wine. this under your like teenage child's bed and you're like, have you been drinking skin contact wine? <laughs> 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 yeah, with the older kids. 12 bottles for it and willing to part with 35 bucks. I had 38 bucks written down for it. I only wanted a bottle, but like, I get it. I wish I wrote this down because I'm I'm showing it. <laughs> yeah, you've got, <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, no, <laughs> no, I think I said 50 and six. Yeah, nice. 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 
into it. What, do we, what does it set us back, Lockie? Ooh. Yeah, 28 bucks retail. That's pretty good. That is very good. That's very good. What have we got? Ooh. Hey, nice. Oh, all right. Yeah, so nice. Uh, yeah, fa a fantastic duo uh, down in McLaren Vale. Guys I actually studied with. I studied, uh, studied winemaking with these guys, and they have like gone from strength to strength to strength. In fact, I think their wines have never looked better. I think one of my exes had that tattooed on their forearm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool PTSD. label. I like PTSD it. PTSD too. right now. Yeah. Be, they do some really cool labels. Uh, honestly, yeah, Alianco's really banging as well. Oh, yeah, they, they, they actually have a uh, project in Mexico. Uh, and, and do and do so uh, they do some amazing uh, Mexican wines as well oh. um, Vidello definitely Vidello. the tastiest Vidello that I've tried. Uh, you know what the holy shit I called this as a skinsy Vidello Jesus oh Christ God. wine number two that, like this is okay I was really confident that I love wine number one this is where things started to, to go sort yeah, of right for me, where basket. I wasn't too sure what was going on here. What did you guys think? I just thought it was some sort of Italian red. Like, I wasn't really sure about anything to do with, like, it, it, it's just mid. Like, it was just mid everything for me. It didn't, like, kick me in the teeth. Some would say it was Goldilocks. Ooh, yeah. Just right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought that would that would be more expensive than it, what, what it was, personally, because I think that's a burgundy. So, and judging by what we're paying burgundy prices at the moment, I would just take it for the sake of taking it at this point yeah, in time. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've chatted about this before. Um, I think that's really shy. I think that that's very young. I think it, it's not showing everything that it's got because it needs a couple more years in bottle, personally. I, I was I was into the 80s on this one. So what uh, what do you guys think? Like 40 bucks. 40 bucks. 75 and I would have bought 12 Ooh. because nice. cause they, this will look good in five or six years, I think. Cool. Right I'm confident about that. How much is set in a bath? Yeah, right. pretty penny. Oh, Cluda to Boeuf. Chevigny. Cluda to Chevigny. That is Loire Valley, isn't it? Loire Valley. Uh, that Cab would be no. Gamay. Gamay, yeah. Pinot Noir Gamay blend. Oh, okay. that's there you pick. go. Uh, from Upper Loire Valley. Yeah, they get really, really tight there. That is amazing. Yeah. That is that's, amazing. That's really cool. Rustic as fuck and at 58 bucks. It's going to go mm, on our top man, 10 wines on the Rustic as fuck 58 bucks list, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Top 10 list coming to you at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to this next little wine. I was a little bit vexed by it. I was on six bottles, though, on 45. I jumped straight to Chardonnay. Yeah, same. You'd be I, shocked to learn. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had like Vermentino sort of vibes here. It had this little salinity to it, like on. Close inspection, it has got a little bit of oak, it's kind of mm. blows out the water, but it could almost be like sort of like a pigato y sort of situation mm -hmm. from Ligurdia, mm -hmm. where they see mm -hmm. a little bit of little bit of oak seasoning. Mm -hmm. Wine, what is it yeah. in this back, Lockie? Okay. Oh, it's pretty 30. good. Yeah. It's pretty solid. It's a pretty solid wine. What the? What, what is that? that? What is that? Chardonnay. It's a Chardonnay. Yeah. Chardy party from Adelaide the Hills. Hills. The Hills. Yeah, cool. All right. The Manard. Son of Dot. Ah, yes, beautiful. It's got two labels. This is really cool. So I wonder if this. Oh no no no! It's a son of dot by, uh, Skintilla. Skintilla. Yeah. Skintilla. Skin. Is this Skintilla the one? Skintilla. This. This is awesome. Uh, That's yeah. That, that is like you would. If I was like, dude, this is like natty from the hills. You'd be like, uh uh. No, that is not natty from the hills. Like, uh -uh. <laughs> That's pretty. That is that clean and mean. That's beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, num wine number four. This is where things uh, started to fall apart for me. I was on one glass. One glass. That's wow. Rare. Yeah, it is. I rare. think I, I think I took six for twenty five because I thought you know I reckon they'd have a good they'd have a good deal on it at some stage because I didn't I didn't vibe with it. It, it. it was just it fell a little bit short. It was a little bit too angular for me, and it was just a little bit under. In in three years of doing this, right, mm. picking apart wines, most people know exactly what I love, mm. but I'm typically quite quiet about the things that I loathe. Mm. And is that it? Aldehyde is easily it, mm. except for sherry. In sherry, aldehyde wins. Oh, every, every day of the week. Every day of the week. In in red wines, for me, it's actually one of the the things you can't come back from. Like, hey, you got a little bit of bread. Nah. Hey, like you've got a little bit of oxidation. Eh. You got aldehyde. You really could have avoided that. Who would have thought that uh, Brendan Carter's kryptonite was aldehyde? Aldehyde. <laughs> yeah. Thirty-five bucks. Three bottles. Fifty-five bucks. One glass. Twenty-five and six. Mm. All right. Where are we at? How much is it costing us? All right. Oh, cool. So we get yeah. square. All right. Three three bottles of oh, Dolcetto. Dolcetto coming Dolcetto. right up. I'm just not. Oh, oh, the road. Oh, I know that one too. Dude, we had we had. Did we have this same wine the other week? We definitely had this 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 did label. We? Wine number one, which yep. was extremely 
nondescript, delicious, but nothing crazy. I 100% agree with every single statement he just said. I Old school, GSM. I write code, uh, I go write code to Ryan, so basically yeah. the same thing. But code to Ryan! 100%, and it didn't look like this. It looked like something so much better than this. Terrible is it the variation. same wine? I don't think it's, maybe maybe or maybe not, but Cote de Rhone, uh, it'll be a, a Syrah-based blend. Or Syrah, Grenache, Grenache. Grenache. Yep. Grenache Syrah. Uh, oh, yeah. Francois Xavier. <laughs> oh. You've been unnamed some so much shit about this, because <laughs> I, I know someone that pours this, so. I, I um, <laughs> we, we had, honestly, we had, I'm not sure if it was this wine, or it was a different wine. Okay. It was definitely from the same producer and it definitely had the same label because okay. that's unmistakable. I thought it was one of the most gorgeous. Oh, absolutely. Like, Love it. Inter like new interpretations of Cote de because Cote de labels can be kind of like, you know. Old school. Old school. How sick is this? Dainty you and know, fun and beautiful. Beautiful. brilliant packaging. Pretty good price point. Damn, man. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Onto the weirdest wine. Oh, oh my god. What the fuck? Done. I called Pinot de Charente, I which is niche. Maybe a Macvan. Macvan? Yeah, I, I called it Late Harvest Tokai, but like a lower quality one, or maybe a Fort de Gascogne. I said musket, which is a type of gun, but I also think it's a type of wine. A musket and a muscat. There we go, that's the difference. <laughs> Do you reckon this is the weirdest wine that we've ever had on the show? Ah, uh, yes. I've ever had on the show. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> would be, yeah. I like the idea of this settling down in bottle and just sitting down for but a like, while. But like, sorry, when you say settling down, is it going to come like a normal wine or is it always going to taste no. like this weird dark twisted fancy thing? A little bit, yeah, but then dark, it's going to, it's, it's dark twisted fancy, but almost like you get more sort of toffee notes as opposed to rose petal and just oh, like balance okay. out a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, it's yeah. a little less high toned. Yeah, okay. really peaky. What? What? How much is this setting us back, man? Ah! <laughs> Mac Vaughn. Yes. It was a Mac Vaughn. You nailed it. Yeah, it was a Mac Vaughn. I've got a Mac Vaughn Rouge from these guys at home. It's, 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 it's tasty. Yeah. Like, domain. they're big boys over there as well, like. Domain Tissot. So, I think the, the, the name and the, like, it never used to be the case. Remember no. The, remember, remember the days when no days. one wanted Jura? Oh. No. Remember that? And definitely Mac <laughs> all right, Now, all right, we gotta, we gotta talk about the last one. It's kind of a little bit hard to, to finish on this one because that Mac Van was kind of yeah. stonking and just out of this world weird. And coating yeah. the mouth pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. I was on 28. I had 15. 15, all right, how much are we paying? Ooh. Wouldn't have thought this so. Is gonna be a table, isn't it? That's a bit rough. That's a bit rough. Wouldn't have thought so, but. Vino Grigio! Oh! Vino! <laughs> what? What? Well, what? That's no. I guess lies. That. <laughs> lies, lies, lies. That's a stitch. Where's, do you have the. Pass us the bottle. Pass us the bottle. Like, I'm just gonna. Don't worry about this for a second. I want to double check this because that's not real. What is this? Yeah, I think it looks the same. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. How much was that? Eighty something. I love this producer. Yeah. <laughs> I love this producer. The Vino, like Bian the Vino Bianco hardcore is hardcore passion. The Vino Bianco is like a staple of all skinsy sort of whites. That oh, is right. the I'm least. You know, it's the least Foradori looking rosé. Oh, like if, so if, if it was like Foradori released a rosé, I'd be like, it didn't. Wouldn't look like. Yeah, this. No. It would look more like Tarvel than this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You'd see more color and everything. Like like that wouldn't you? This is like lean, mean fighting machine, and at 2020, I would expect like that's still really lean for 2020. Yeah, I'd want to see this after six years, seven years in the cellar before really approaching it. Yeah, damn man, we just opened it too soon. 100%. Uh, yeah, like it. I feel a little bit dirty now. I'm gonna have to go home and have a shower. <laughs> I shouldn't say things like that about that style of wine, but I did. And on that note, guys, weirdest wine lineup, uh, wine lineup that I've seen in a while. Bizarre. Definitely the most bizarre wines, and what a way to finish. Uh, oh. Henry, thank you. Dan, big thank you as well. Thanks for yeah, sticking out with us. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. My absolute pleasure anytime. And uh, yeah. <laughs> until next week, we'll be here.